Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Maui Jim Sunglasses. First Tellurium Corp, the future of mining. And Hardy Rods and Reels. Today on the bench, I want to tie you Don's Killer Chronomid. Why it's called that is because it was my number one chronomid all of this year and probably most of last year. It is a killer pattern. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a size 16 Twix long curved nymph hook, some 8 aught blue dun thread for the thread, some white antrum for the gills, a 3 32nd inch black nickel bead for the bead, some 8 aught blue dun thread for the body. For the first rib, we'll use some fine red wire, some fine black wire for the second rib, and some 8 aught rust thread for the thorax. So to start the fly off, I've put the bead onto the hook and I've put the wide end of the bead towards the eyelet. And that helps when we tie in the gills. So I'm going to push that back for now. I'm going to start with some fine thread. I like to use, uh, you know, 18 aught or 12 aught thread to tie on the gills. Take some, take a little bit of white antron and just take a few wraps nice and tight. Cut off your excess. And I like to, uh, to whip finish that just to hold the gills in place. Like that. Cut off your thread and then move your bead over your gills, just like that. And we'll cut these to length a little bit later in the tie. Now we're going to take our blue done thread and just wrap in a little bit just to get it started. And the first step is to take our two ribbing materials. So what we're going to do is we have our black and our red ribs, and these are both fine wires. I like to tie them in together. So I'll actually measure them out pretty even, kind of about the same length, and tie them right in behind the bead. And I like to lay them down on the side of the hook so that they get tied in nice and even. And all I'm doing is one wrap over of thread as I go because I want to keep my my body fairly thin all the way down. So I'll take it close to the hook bend so you can see I get pretty close and now what I'm going to do is pull these wires up and I'm going to take just a couple of wraps of thread behind the wires just to give it a little bit of a cheater body back there and then bring my thread up and now I'm going to wind forward to make the body. Now, when I'm wrapping the body, I don't want a real thick body. I want it slightly tapered. You know, when I tie you uh, one of our real fine bodied chronomids, I'll show you that where we tie it with thread. It's very thin. But this one, we want a little bit taper. It is imitating a slightly bigger chronomid. So just keep wrapping your blue done thread and wrap it, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly even, just kind of taper it. And one way, one trick is just to, to spin your bodkin or your bobbin, and that lays out your thread so it lays out a little bit thinner. Just a little flatter so you can create a, a flatter body on the fly. Mine, I don't worry about it too much. It's, it's nice, it works just fine that way. So now we've got a bit of a taper, you know, nice and thin to the back, a little bit tapered. And now what I like to do is see which which wire I want to go first. So really, they're both pretty even. So I'm going to start with the red. And again, I just like to try to space them up. I don't really worry about counting. I usually do about six though. There's three, four, five, six. Tie off at the eyelet, or right at the, behind the bead. And just wiggle off your red thread or red wire. Now take your black wire and try to follow up the best you can with just your black wire just in front of your red wire. The best you can. Doesn't have to be exact, but try to try to follow it up. And then finish right behind the bead. And same thing with this wire. Just uh, 360 it until it comes off. Now just uh, get a nice thorax on the fly. We're just going to whip finish off our blue done thread. 
right there. And now we're going to take our our rust color, bronze color, rust color, but I prefer the rust. And we're just going to take a few rafts with the rust. Just like that, just to get it tied in. Cut off nice and thin. And all I'm going to do is take a couple of whip finishes there. So it's a nice transition from the blue done and the red and black rib to the rust colored thorax. So take about three or four whip finishes. And that does it pretty good. Cut off your thread. Now if you got extra thread there, a lot of times if you have extra thread, you can burn off your excess. So what I do is I just dap it like that with the flame and that burns off any excess thread, which makes it real nice, nice and clean before I finish. Now to finish the fly, we're gonna pull this, the gills back and cut them there. One came fairly short, but they, you know, they do have full gills. If you've seen chronomids, they do puff quite a bit. Now to finish the fly off, we're gonna take some Again, UV coating or, or Loctite, some kind of finished material, and just put some on the fly. And then move it around with your botkin to get a nice finish on the fly. And this makes them very durable. You know, if you finish with a UV coating or, or any kind of uh, head cements or you know, crazy glues make, works really well. Loctite's awesome. And then I usually put that in a cork and, and let it dry out. So there it is, Don's Killer Chronomid. As I mentioned on the intro, it was my number one chronomid pattern all of this year and probably most of last year. So definitely make sure you have some in your fly box for the upcoming season.